Okay, this is second semester math, seventh grade, uh, unit one, lesson 11. Um, <clears throat> vocabulary review, what do two intersecting lines share? Who can tell me what do two intersecting lines share? Justin. Um, they, would f they would form an angle, intersecting lines do form an angle. Yep, but <clears throat> what do they share in common? What do they, they have something in common? Uh, go ahead. Uh, they, they will, f they can form a vertex. Yep. Yeah. Um, Miriam. Mm, a line would be a side of something. Um, that's not quite what I'm looking for. Rehan. Nope, that was already said. Bokar. Nope. Jose, did you have an idea? They have an intersection. Now you're, now you're on the right track. They intersect. And where they intersect, they have something in common. Rehan? Like they make it adjacent? No, not, not quite what I'm looking for. Sophia? They intersect at a point, so they have one point in common. Does that make sense? So what do two intersecting lines share? They share a common point. A common point. Okay, <clears throat> use the points in each diagram to name the figure below. Okay, number two, who can who can name this figure? Leah? A line segment. It's a line segment, but we need to be specific. This line segment has a name. Okay, so line segment. W, or we can use a notation, VW, with a line above it. Hold on, give me a second to recalibrate this. So you could use the notation to designate that line, VW. Or you could have named it something else. What was the other name we could have named it? WV. WV. Line segment WV. That's the notation for that. OK, so those are the two ways to name that line segment. Number three, who's got number three for me? Bokar? Ray, F, G. And you could use the notation. Can you describe the notation for me? I, I see what you're motioning. We put basically a, a small ray above it, and then we have to have our first letter be the point that the ray starts, so FG. There's only one way to name a ray, okay? You have to have the first letter be where it starts, okay? And the second letter is any letter to the side where it extends infinitely. Okay, and then the last one, number four. Who's got number four? Yes. Mm -hmm. Line CD, or we can use that in notation. You draw a line above it. That means you have two arrows above it. CD, and there's a, and you can name lines more than one way, right? What's the other way to name this line? Line DC. Okay. Now let's get to what we're working on today. I'm going to go ahead and read this since I want to put this on the message board. What you learn to construct congruent segments and per perpendicular bisectors. New vocabulary, compass, midpoint, segment bisector, perpendicular lines, perpendicular bisector. Why learn this? You can use a geometric tool called a compass to draw a circle or part of a circle called an arc. So we've already talked about this briefly in the past. You can use a compass and a straight edge, an unmarked ruler, to construct a congruent segment for a given segment. Okay, we don't have a straight edge with no marks on it, so we're going to use our protractors. Okay, so we're not necessarily using them to measure um, our drawings, but um, we're just using them to draw a straight line. All right, <coughs> some key words here. How many, wor how, many, how many wheels are on a bicycle? Two. Okay, <laughs> two wheels on a bicycle. The, the, key, the, the root word we're looking for in the word bicycle is what? Bi, right? 
if I had a um, uh, a one wheeled vehicle that I pedal, what would we call that? A unicycle, the root word being uni. Okay, so um, the root word here for segment by sector, by meaning two. Um, sector, I like to think about the word dissect. What are you doing when you're dissecting something? You're, you're cutting it, right? So if we're talking about a segment by sector, we're cutting what? What is a segment? A segment to what? We're going to cut a line into two parts, bisector. Got it? OK. And more specifically, a segment bisector cuts a line into two equal parts. Got it? All right. A perpendicular line, two perpendicular, perpendicular lines form what type of angle? Does anybody know? Thomas, perpendicular lines, what kind of angles do they form? No idea? India. They are intersecting lines, but they are perpendicular lines that intersect. And what does it mean to be perpendicular? Jose in the back? Right angles. So when you have perpendicular, perpendicular lines, not only do they make a right angle, all four angles that, they, that could be formed by two lines intersecting, all four of them will be 90 degrees. You guys understand? We're going to see that here in a little bit. OK. A perpendicular bisector would be two lines that form 90 degrees at all four angles. But they also cut the two lines into two equal parts at their intersection. Do you understand? And their intersection would be the midpoint. So we're going to see exactly what that means here in a little bit. So first of all, take out a piece of paper, OK? You should have your desk cleared out. Take out a piece of paper. And what I need you to do to start is I need for you to draw line AB and draw in the middle of your paper, kind of like what we did last time when we did the triangles, if you recall. Draw right in the middle of your paper. Don't draw too long. I would say between three and five inches, but not too long. You're not really measuring it. It's just like a rough. I just need a straight line. Okay. And on either end of the line, I need you to label those points. One, po one end's going to be A, one end's going to be B. Same. Could be completely horizontal, could be a little bit slanted, but not too big because we're using that line to draw um, a congruent line. Okay, so in this example, it says construct segment CD that's congruent to AB. Well, here's how we do that we're going to do it without measuring AB. Okay, here's how you do it using a compass. So first of all, I have segment AB drawn. Everybody has segment AB drawn on their paper? And you've labeled the endpoints. Now what I need you to do is somewhere away from your segment, I need you to draw point C. Anywhere off to the side or below, doesn't matter, somewhere on your paper. Okay. Now here's what I need you to do. Once you've created a point C and you've labeled it, now we're going to take our compass and we're going to take the point and place it at one end and the pencil and have it extend to the other end of my line. Do you guys understand what I'm doing? You're basically extending your compass so that the point or the spike is at one end of the line at the end point. I have it on point A and the pencil is extended all the way out to point B. Do you guys understand? Now we don't want to change the opening of our compass now. We want to keep that opening the same for when we draw in an arc. So the next step is to lift our compass. And remember I said easiest way is to hold it by the point. Don't hold it with both hands. Hold it by the point. And you're going to take the spike and you're going to hold it in C. And then you're going to draw an arc. It doesn't have to be a big arc, just an arc, just like that. From point C, you're going to draw an arc. And just make sure you have an arc that fits on your paper somewhere. Don't change the opening of your, your compass. Your compass should stay the same opening as when you place it against line segment AB. Okay. And that was a good job. You don't have to make it perfect. You just, there's just a reference point. It's just an arc to help you figure out where an, our next intersection is going to be. Okay. Any questions about what I just did? So now you're not going to need your compass anymore. 
the next thing you need is your straight edge. So with your straight edge, you're going to put it so that your straight edge has the point somewhere along that straight edge. And your straight edge needs to extend past your arc that you just drew. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a line through these points C and through arc, the arc that you just drew. Okay. Once you've done that, remove your ruler and label the intersection at the arc and the line you just drew, oops, point D. Okay, so guess what? Here's what I want you to write somewhere on your paper. Now, if you, if you followed the steps correctly, segment CD is congruent to segment AB. They are the same length. So it doesn't matter the angle that you drew, as long as your arc was the same distance from C to your arc was the same distance from A to B, any line I draw through C that intersects the arc is going to be the same length as AB. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions at this point? Okay. We're a little short on time, so I'm just going to move along to the next activity. If you want, you can see um, you can see some of this in the notes. If you want to do this activity on your own, you're welcome to do that. Um, here's the next part of our lesson: the midpoint of a segment is a point that divides two segments divides into two segments of equal length. So, if you have a midpoint on a line, it creates two segments that are the same length. Does that make sense? OK. That's the definition of midpoint. So it could be a point. Um, and remember, two lines that intersect, intersect at a point. So keep that in mind. All right, a segment bisector is a line, segment, or array that goes through the midpoint of a segment. You guys understand? So if you have a line intersecting and it, it cuts, um, it intersects with another line, and that point that they intersect is the midpoint of the line that is called a segment bisector. Okay. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. That's what we said earlier. A segment bisector that is perpendicular to a segment is the perpendicular bisector. So if two lines form right angles at their intersection, they're perpendicular lines. But if two lines bisect and are right to each other, right angles to each other, it is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, are we clear about that? Any questions? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to construct, we're constructing perpendicular bisectors. So again, I would flip your page over, and we're going to draw a segment AB again. Okay, not too big, not too small. I would say about the right size between three and five inches. Try to put it in the middle of your paper. Okay, make sure you label your endpoints. One endpoint should be A, one endpoint should be B. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your compass and you're going to extend it more than half the length of your line. You guys understand? So it, it can't be less than half. It's got to be more than half. I did it about 3 quarters just to make sure. All right, here's what you're going to do next. You're going to draw a big arc. Boom and boom. Okay. 
you're going to take the spike, you're going to stick it on one endpoint and draw an arc. Once you've done that, you're going to flip it over, and you're going to do the same thing at point A. And I'll just use a different color for this. So here it is, same thing. And if you notice, the two arcs will meet at two points. They're going to intersect at two points. So guess what we're going to name those two points? I'm going to name one of them C, and one of them I'm going to label D. Okay, once you have that intersection, you're going to take your line, and I'm going to draw a straight line. Okay, it's going to intersect these two points. So here we go. Intersect C, there we go. And once I do that, I'm also going to label the intersection formed by the line point M. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Guess why I called it point M? Midpoint. It's the midpoint, right. Point M is the midpoint of segment DC and AB. Okay, guess what that means? That means segment AM is congruent to segment. BM and also segment DM is congruent to segment CM. Okay, any questions? Okay, almost done. Q is the midpoint of PR, segment PR. Write a statement about two congruent statements having endpoints Q. What can we say? Think about the drawing we just did. Congruent statement about Segments with Q as an endpoint. Go ahead. Right. QP is congruent to um, RQ. All right. Can you construct a different perpendicular bisector of AB in the previous example? Can you? Is there a different perpendicular bisector? You could make it different because it could be longer, right? But it will meet at the same midpoint. All right, now here's the one I want to emphasize. All right, so you have point B right here. B is the midpoint on line AC. So if I have line AC and B is the midpoint, AC, think about that. And the first question, AB is 4, what is AC going to equal? If AB is 4, what's AC got to equal? No, AB is 4. What's AC? Eight. It is 8. Very good. AC is 9. What's AB? Very good. 4.5. OK. AC is 7. What is BC? 3.5 or 3.5. And last, BC is 5. So what's AB? If BC is 5, AB is also 5. Okay, that is it for the lesson, lesson 11.